Bees are vital to our survival. Without them, some say, the world would starve. But they're also endangered. Many species are dying out as their habitats are destroyed. Dave Gulson is one of the world's leading experts on bumblebees and keen to share his enthusiasm and to warn us of what's happening. A Sting in the Tail is part memoir, part scientific inquiry, part manifesto. We spoke to the author at Broadcasting House. Dave Gulson, why did you want to write this book? I guess to try and raise awareness of the importance of um, small things, insects in particular. Um, uh, people, people, I don't think, appreciate how important biodiversity is, and particularly the little things. People worry about rhinos and polar bears, um, but they, they rarely are too bothered by the fact that we're losing some, some of our smaller wildlife quite, quite rapidly. And, and actually, they should be really worried about it because these things do something very important. In the case of bees, it's really easy to explain what that is. They, they pollinate lots of things we like to eat. Uh, important to say, of course, that this is a book not about honeybees, the thought that people keep in hives, but bumblebees. Just explain for the really ignorant what the difference is. Uh, well, the, the, the most people, uh, or many, many people, think there's one species of bee, and it lives in a box, and it produces honey. But if you ask them to draw it, they'd, they'd make it fat with yellow and black stripes. So they're getting things mixed up. So the thing that lives in a box is the honeybee, and it does produce honey, but it's not got black and yellow stripes at all, that big fat furry stripy bee is a bumblebee. Now, you're a, a bumblebee fan and have been for a, a long time, what is it about them? Oh, I, they, it sounds a bit silly for a scientist to say that they're endearing and fluffy and I kind of enjoy studying them, but that, to be honest, is, is kind of where it comes from to start with. If I was talking to a funding agency, I might come up with something slightly more uh, convincing, but but it, it's they're really interesting. They're they're actually their behaviours are so complicated, and they're for insects incredibly clever and capable of all sorts of feats of learning and navigation and so on. Um, they're they're pretty amazing creatures. Now this is a, an interesting book because it's 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 all sorts of things. It's part memoir. It's part account of various scientific experiments. It's partly a sort of campaigning uh, book, campaigning tract. Um, one of the engaging things about it is that as a scientist, you're quite prepared to tell us about the experiments. That didn't work. Yeah, I well, a, a sort of side agenda in writing it is to try and kind of demystify science and scientists. You know, we, we I think we sometimes get a bit of a bad press, um, and people think we're always doing horrible experiments in labs on torturing animals or something. And actually, most science isn't like that at all. Um, and and also, often science doesn't work. Science is all about designing experiments, trying things out, exploring. And, and more often than not, the, the thing you started out testing, you know, the experiment either doesn't work or what you thought was going to happen doesn't happen or whatever. And I think that's kind of what makes science interesting. One of the points you make in the book, very important, is restoring habitats which um, uh, animals, insects like bumblebees, will flourish in. Do you ever despair at the prospect of sort of reversing the environmental degradation? I, I think we've gone a long way in the UK to, to doing that. Um, you know, there are a lot of farmers now that are trying to combine the two, food production and leaving a little bit of space for wild, wildlife, being it strips of flowers along the edge of the field or, or whatever. Uh, and that, that works. There are some really nice examples of farms with lots of wildlife and good food production. So it doesn't need to be a, a kind of, you know, being at loggerheads. Um, I'm a bit more negative about the world beyond Britain um, and what's happening globally. Um, I think we're behaving in a pretty unsustainable way on many fronts.